So tonight's Jupiter night, and actually Thursday is Jupiter day, so it's kind of perfect. And, I, and I'm sort of laughing about the fact, or thinking about the fact that so often when people teach classes, Thursday night is like the juicy night. I mean, do you ever, I mean, like Thursday night's such a great night for classes somehow. I, every time I sign up for classes on a Thursday night or something, and people have conflicts with Thursday nights because there's so many activities, and it makes sense for Jupiter because Jupiter is, is the teacher, is the guru, is the, you know, is the planet that says, let's expand our horizons, let's try something new, you know, let's go to a choir concert, you know, be in a choir, let's be in a dance recital, whatever it is. So tonight's a perfect night, and um, just to just to give you a just to mark the beginning, you know, to sort of say Jupiter, Jupiter. Here's a picture which I had. I wish I had in like a big old thing. I'll pass it around. But just to give a sense of the planet that we're talking about here. All right. Here's Jupiter. All right. And there's the Earth. Okay. <laughs> and there's Pluto. And there's Mercury, Mars, Venus. Okay. So we're talking about. A gigantic planet. <laughs> okay? It's a big old planet. You know, and Saturn is pretty good size next to it. And if you look, actually, and then let's look at this. Here's the sun, okay? And here's Jupiter. Okay? Oh, wow. So it gives you even more of a sense of perspective. But it is important to look at the size of that because Jupiter and Saturn are considered the outer planets. These are the inner, more personal planets, you know, not, not Pluto, but Mercury, Mars, Venus are the more inner, more personal planets. Then we get to the outer planets, and then Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are the transpersonal planets, all right? So these are really key, and the size of them actually indicates a lot about their effect on our lives. The sun, Jupiter is the only planet that gives out more energy than it absorbs from the sun. So that's a really interesting hint about Jupiter's gift. You know, most planets absorb and then they give off. Jupiter absorbs but then gives off extra. So Jupiter is, you know, I always say Jupiter is like the Santa Claus of planets, right? It just gives a little extra. It's gorgeous. It's beneficent. It's generous. And, and just because it's kind of lovely to uh, honor Jupiter in, um, in all its forms, the way that I want to start tonight is Jupiter is the storyteller. Jupiter, you know, Jupiter tells stories on Thursday nights <laughs> about overcoming adversity. You know, about here is, here is what happened and here's how I overcame it. Because Jupiter overcomes adversity. And when you have a lot of Saturn going on in your chart, and some of you do, and I can point it out as we go, you know, Jupiter's like, ah, oh, it's just this welcome relief. So just to start the tone of the, the night, let's hear this story. This is actually, um, you know, my favorite, Carolyn Casey, um, includes this in her book, Making the Gods Work for You. And um, it's such a Jupiterian story that you gotta hear it, okay? So, Fatima had worked for many years with her father spinning thread into exotic colors. One day her father said to her, Fatima, you have worked so hard, now we're going on a long journey, Jupiter to sell our wares. Perhaps in the course of this journey, we will find you a handsome and appropriate young man to marry. So they set off full of hope. Just off the coast of Crete, a terrible storm arose, and the ship was dashed on the rocks. All were drowned except Fatima, who was washed ashore near Alexandria. She was taken in by a family of cloth makers who taught her their craft. Within a few years, she had made a happy life for herself, but one day, when she was on the seashore, a band of slave traders kidnapped her and took her to Istanbul. For the second time, she lost everything. A kindly man, a mask maker, took pity and brought her, thinking that perhaps her for oh, and bought her, thinking that perhaps her fortunes would be better if he, rather than someone else, did so. But when he returned to his home, they found his business in shambles. So he, his wife, and Fatima dedicated themselves to the hard work of making ships masks. Fatima worked so hard that she was granted her freedom. Once again, she settled into a new life. One day, the mast maker said, Fatima, take these ship's masts to Java as my agent and sell them at a good price. She set forth, but the ship was wrecked by a terrible typhoon off the coast of China. <laughs> she cursed and bewailed her fate that no matter how hard she tried, nothing was working out. Why am I so jinxed? 
we any of us said this? <laughs> <laughs> but, but what Fatima did not know was that in China there was a legend that one day an extraordinary woman would appear on the shore and be able to build a marvelous building that no one had ever seen before called a tent. So periodically, the emperor of China would send, send scouts along the shore looking for this extraordinary woman. And one scout happened to be on shore as Fatima emerged from the sea, shaking her fist at God. And the scout said, well, you must come with me to the emperor's court. Very well, she said. When she arrived at the palace, the emperor said to her, can you build this marvelous building we've heard so much about called a tent? And Fatima, having seen so many tents in her journey, said, well, of course. Then do so, said the emperor. Well, first I'll need some stout cloth, said Fatima. Ah, oh, we don't have such as you need. So Fatima remembered her time with the kindly Alexandrian weavers, and she wove stout cloth. Then she said, bring me strong rope. Ah, uh, we don't have such as you need, said the emperor. And she remembered her time with her father as a spinner, and she spun colorful stout rope. All I need, she said, are long poles for the tent. <laughs> oh, we don't have those. <laughs> and she remembered her time making masks and, and made long poles. From the sum of her observations of tents and all her journeys, Fatima made the most marvelous tent that anyone had ever imagined could be. And the emperor said, you have done this great thing. Name your reward. She married a handsome prince and remained in happiness, surrounded by her children to the end of her days. She reconciled herself ecstatically to her life, realizing that each apparently catastrophic chapter had taught her some crucial talent for the making of her ultimate happiness. And Carolyn Casey says, and so it is with us. And the, the tale of Fatima the Spinner and the Tent lasts 12 years, which is how long it takes Jupiter to go around our chart. So we're, Jupiter offers us these opportunities, and I like to say to like put tools in our backpack, you know, to collect tools into our backpack. And we never know how they're going to coalesce, and we never know how they're going to come together. We never know at what moment there's going to be this, you know, here I am, a writer, a performer. Uh, you know, how are they going to come together? Here I am, a mast maker, a stout we you know, cloth weaver. And they come together in the most unusual, beautiful ways, and that is Jupiter. And so when we're feeling most, you know, oh, life is hard and I'm doing these piddly little things, Jupiter says, look at the big picture. In fact, a really excellent exercise to think about would be to say, um, to, to, to as humorously as you could, talk about your life right now. It, imagine yourself a year from now and talk about your life right now in as humorous and enthusiastic a way as you could. <laughs> Or, or as sort of ironically curmudgeonly as you could, do you know? But it's like, how do you in, infuse the present moment with possibility or enthusiasm or humor about what you're going through? Does that make sense? Jupiter, Jupiter, Jupiter says yes. Jupiter, Jupiter wants to grow. Jupiter wants to look at things in the best light possible. That's the that's the glyph for Jupiter. Okay, and <coughs> Jupiter is very at home. Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius, okay? So some of you have some very strong Sagittarius in your chart. Sagittarius is the sign of the journeyer. It's the sign of the, the enthusiast. It's the sign of the big vision. And Jupiter says, yes. Jupiter says, let's go on that, that journey. Jupiter says, Let's travel afar. Let's think in big pictures. If Mercury is the small mind, you know, and the, you know, the everyday mind, and like, how do I get from here to here? And how do I communicate this to you? And how do I take this information and put it here? Jupiter says, let's talk philosophy. Let's talk art. Let's talk literature. The, the, the Sanskrit word for Jupiter is guru. Mm. Isn't that interesting? So. It's the big, the big teacher in your life. And as I said, it takes 12 years to go around your chart. So at the age of 12, 24, 36, 48, you have a Jupiter return. So those are heightened Jupiter moments for everyone. Th those ages are very significant. They're Jupiterian ages, okay? Um, of course, when Jupiter hits your sun, 
every 12 years, that's another amazing moment. And when Jupiter hits your ascendant, that's another amazing moment. So you have, you know, you, you constantly have 12 year, 12 year cycles. Um, and another interesting way to think about Jupiter is, what I could not do 12 years ago, I probably can do now, or I might be more capable of doing now, because you've gone through a Jupiter cycle. So if you go back 12 years every once in a while and go, hmm, what was I working on? What, was I, what seed was I planting? It often has come to fruition in this moment. And that's particularly so, that's particularly so when Jupiter's on your sun, when Jupiter's on your ascendant, when Jupiter is, you know, uh, having a Jupiter return. And, and I say that, I, just to make that clear for all of you, your natal birth chart, you know, here's your natal birth chart and Jeffrey's natal birth chart. And, and um, what I'm saying is when the planets in the heavens aspect that, so in other words, when they have, they're in a particular mathematical relationship with that, when Jupiter hits your ascendant, when Jupiter in the sky hits your ascendant, when Jupiter in the sky hits your sun, you know, when Jupiter in the sky hits your moon. Um, so that's what I'm talking about right now. And just to put it in perspective, the two outer planets are Jupiter 12 years and Saturn 30 years. Saturn takes 30 years. So those two planets really shape our lives. Mercury, Mars, Venus, they go quickly, you know, and yes, we have pleasant, interesting experiences with their transits, but Jupiter is the first planet that really has a long-term effect on our lives because it spends one year in each sign. So right now, for example, in the heavens, Jupiter is in the sign Scorpio, which is a wonderful time for saying yes to depthy study, to saying yes to transformation, to saying yes to, you know, in our world, let's say, picking up the gunk and going, look at this mess, and trying to lift it into the light. You know, it's, it's a sort of, it's a fabulous time to really admit the darkness and wrestle it into the light, okay? So this is such a Jupiterian phrase. Open my path before me and grant me the opportunity to be of maximum good in the world. Wherever your Jupiter is, what house it's in, what sign it's in, is an opportunity for you to give your gift. And it's the place where you can receive blessings. Jupiter is the ultimate benefactor. Okay? So, other ways of saying that, you know, wherever Jupiter is, it's an opportunity for you to achieve a full understanding of that area, to really get it in this lifetime, to be like, oh, yes, I, I, I'm shedding light here. Okay? Opportunity to grow. The door is open to you wherever it is. It's like, oh, come on in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome. Jupiter's in the third house. Welcome. Let's have the most fabulous conversation. Let's write. Let's converse. Let's, you know, let's, let's make our minds teeming full of fabulous information. Okay? Let's be wonderful telepaths. <laughs> okay? Um, another way is, is yes, yes to whatever it is. So let's say Jupiter and Aries. Yes to what? What would Jupiter and Aries be? Starting things. Yes to starting things. Yes to... What else? Come on, I know some of you know some astrology. <laughs> yes to new beginnings. Yes to initiative. Yes to head first through the world. Okay?